Hey folks, Daniel Kempling here. Thanks for letting me inside your device today. I do hope this finds you well. Last time we were together, we talked about uh, clearly defining your problems, setting priorities to help guide your inquiry. In this quest, this objective to extinguish the problem, and we are defining this problem loosely as a disease. Something out of balance, something unjust, something not working for the common good. And we feel it viscerally in our bodies, virtually all of us, when we uh, peel away enough of the uh, onion layers. Now, many of us have developed all sorts of coping mechanisms, and some of us, as well as the coping mechanisms, have uh, undertaken different disciplines to try and polish our experience, uh, perhaps even give an antidote to some of our suffering. In my case, the one that really attracted me early on was a martial art called Aikido. <clears throat> Magic stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, mysterious. Kind of hard to understand martial art, but wonderful good stuff to practice and attracts really good-hearted souls. Um, now, I became, oh, after about five years of doing this, uh, enchanted with a particularly mercurial teacher named uh, T.K. Chiba, became his apprentice, moved to study with him in 1989 in San Diego, California. And I must admit, when I started on that journey, I thought that I needed to really just get more fit, try a little bit harder, and certainly I could join, you know, in the ranks of these elite students of this famous teacher. If I just, you know, buckled down and gave it the old college try. Yeah, no. <clears throat> Chiba Sensei uh, created an environment that put us all through a filter and that filter would identify very early on whether we had an Aikido body and what was this Aikido body was it some I don't know esoteric construct that we all sat about agreeing upon it late at night no it was much more practical than that this Aikido body was the body that survived taking Ukemi uh, for Chiba Sensei, uh, for those who have never practiced the art of Aikido, Ukemi is the role of the attacker uh, who takes the role of attacking for four turns and then the person changes roles. That's the format to Aikido. But the person upon attacking also has to absorb the impact, the power, the potentially lethal force in reality. Uh, that is delivered from the technique, take it into the body and, and neutralize it, if you will, and be ready to fight another day. So there's a lot of falling down in an elegant way, one would hope. So that's what taking ukemi is, for those that haven't come across that idea, because who would have unless you've done Aikido, right? So the filter where you're passed through is learning to take ukemi for this man who made nothing obvious and predictable when it came to taking his ukemi. Uh, it could change like a cat pouncing upon a mouse emerging from a hole. It could change <laughs> like a uh, bullet ricocheting off a wall. And if he sensed that you were trying to anticipate his movements, oh, things went dreadfully, dreadfully wrong indeed very fast. It was terrifying. Turns out that it wasn't about being fit. It wasn't about even being brave. It wasn't about being strong. It wasn't about being smart. It wasn't about being anything that I had. And yet there was people around me that seemed to be getting it done. And so that part of the apprenticeship was not just learning uh, from this man how to survive these living puzzles, uh, but also to absorb from the environment, from my seniors around me, how they had managed to solve this puzzle. How could you respond to the unexpected? Truth be told, a lot of this was just plain terrifying it really was 
And yet, there was no extinguishing the fear. That became very clear. My seniors seemed to be just as terrified as I was, to be honest. So it wasn't about eliminating fear, yet somehow we had to manage to move appropriately and spontaneously and effectively to ride the wave uh, that was the technique of Professor T.K. Chiba. What I found along the way was my body was out of tune. It was uptight, or as Chiba Sensei would say, Daniel, don't be so hyper like that. Uptight, uh, misaligned. The posture, the very technical functional alignment in the body, taijiku in Japanese, body shaft that is needed to do Aikido was something that you actually had to live so that it was instinctual, not just have it as a gown or a tux for a special uh, occasion, but your everyday genes. You had to carry your body this way in order for it to react instinctively. And it was disconnected. It was disconnected because with the posture out of alignment, uh, an excessive amount of tension in the upper body, around the chest, the jaw. The body was disconnected. It was like a car that whose tranny wouldn't engage. The core muscles wouldn't engage to connect the lower body to drive the upper. And so the upper body uh, became dominant, prone to agitation, uh, prone to exhaustion because of constricted breathing, all these things. And so the puzzle that was part of the Kenshusei experience, that is being an apprentice uh, in this martial arts path, was to learn how to take what I thought was, I don't know, special occasion powers, the stuff you did in the dojo, the stuff you did in the zendo, the stuff you did on stage for demonstrations and weave it into one's daily life. But bring it into my daily life, how? <clears throat> Do I just, I don't know, chant aphorisms? Uh, believe myself to be more effective and in integrated? Uh, no, tried that, didn't work. As I started to look at some of the most basic physical problems in front of me. Pretty classic one was being uptight. I intimated at that earlier. <clears throat> We're mammals. Mammals do something in anticipation of combat, especially combat they might not rather be involved with, rather avoid the scrap and the potential uh, life-changing or ending injury. They make themselves look bigger, get their hackles up, just about all the other mammals, having put their hackles up, are still quite effective fighters within the bounds of their species. Humans suck. <laughs> we really do. When we have the flinch response uptight, we typically have two paths of behavior from that point. Right? One I call the uh, deer in the headlights. Right? Uh, or the other one I call the fish on the dock, my favorite. <sighs> you know, freaking out. So, being terrified, taking a Kemi, afraid that I'd get hit in the face if he was unhappy with my performance. Oh, guess what? I was always getting hit in the face because he was unhappy with my performance. You know, you're not really paranoid if they are out to get you. How do I solve this problem of being uptight because I'm actually unable to physically respond with my whole body because of all the residual tension that's locked in my jaw, in my chest. I really can't move effectively and I can't get rid of it. Chiba Sensei for years and years said to me, drop that, drop that. That was a puzzle that took me about 15 years to solve, and I'll tell you that story another time.
Anyway, how is this all tying in with our grand project? Seeking some effective strategies to extinguish our disease. Well, for me, this very real tussle with physical fear had me begin an inquiry into my daily life that was fascinating, embarrassing, frustrating, but fascinating and really set me on a, a road of inquiry for which I am oh so thankful because it's endlessly interesting and rewarding. So, what did I find out? Well, find out that this whole fight or flight, this flinch response is hardwired into us. It can be reprogrammed with deep training, but it is hardwired into us. If I'd like to kick you in the knee, probably flicking at your finger, you know, your eyelids just before I do so will be enough to distract 99% of the people in the world just because of the way that we are designed to protect our eyeballs with these fast twitch muscles. So yeah, it is hardwired into us. Nonetheless, I need a solution for not getting so uptight in anticipation of getting smacked in the head. And this is where I came across both a learning principle and what has become for me uh, a very important coaching principle. And that is focus on the positive. That is give your system or your student, or in my case, I consider just consider my body mind learning experience. I just call it my system. Give my system clearer and clearer directions uh, towards desired results. And I'll give you an example very concrete of this um, situation. Don't get hit. Really ineffective for a whole body movement. Whereas, move the feet briskly ahead of contact. Wow, way more effective. Carries everything with it, and the upper body, as it turns out, doesn't have to carry a lot of tension. In fact, it is freed up from having to carry tension because the body's, mind's, system's whole attention has shifted to moving the feet. I used to call them happy feet. I had the image of, you know, like Snoopy, peanuts, happy feet. Yeah, happy feet. Move your feet real fast when you're taking a chemi. Pitter-patter, pitter-patter. One of the reasons I believe that boxers do a lot of skipping. I used to do a lot of skipping for conditioning too. All right? Being able to be mobile, agile, very responsive uh, from a point of view of footwork turns out to be a wonderful antidote for our uh, carrying excessive tension in the upper body. And this tension is so habitual and chronic that most of us aren't even aware, especially the stuff around the jaw. And because of sort of a holographic uh, relationship we have within our bodies, when the jaw is tight, the pelvis is also relatively frozen in its movements. Okay, I didn't want to get into a whole bunch of esoteric kinesiology uh, at this point. What I did want to make the point was these very physical lessons, dealing with fear, recognizing that you are chronically uptight and living in an almost chronic fight or flight state is a really useful, though painful, insight in helping us along this path of inquiry. And so what I pointed at here, this very youth, uh, useful method that I found uh, to help guide my inquiry and get through this particular hurdle, dealing with a very physical uh, fear of getting smacked, was to shape the request that I had for my system. And this is where we're going next, folks. Uh, you may have heard the term in programming, gigo, garbage in, garbage out. That's where we're going next time. 
you want to stay up on how this all develops because I can hardly wait to see what I say. Uh, do hit like, do hit subscribe down there below. Thanks very much for supporting me that way. And uh, next time we're going to talk about how we can awake the genius of our bodies if we would but ask it the right questions. Until such time, stay sharp, be strong, all the best.